Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. Today we are joined by Sean Hemming Metcalf from Inventory Base, who will be talking to you about technolo technology's role in creating personal connect connections. If you have any questions, pop them into the question box and we should have some time at the end to do a question and answer session. Okay, I'll hand over to you now, Sean. Lovely, thank you ever so much. Um, hopefully, oh, hang on a second. I knew I'd do something wrong. Uh, let me just do that again so that hopefully you can actually see my screen and not anything. Oh, no, no, that's not working. <laughs> so sorry about this. Hang on a second. Let's get this sorted. No, it's not doing it. Hang on oh, a second. You just had it then, Sean. So sorry. It's not playing ball with me. There's always, and it's typical. I, I tried it first off and it worked absolutely fine. No problems at all, and now it's not doing it for me. Does that work? There, nah, yeah, you got it. Good. You just had I'm, it, it's gone off it now. <laughs> gone onto your desktop. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's not, um, like I said, it's uh, showing up. Let me just try a different way. Uh, let's see if I, it's great when someone from tech doesn't get the tech right. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that's Yay. it. Yay, lovely. <laughs> I have no idea why I did that, so apologies. Right, okay, let's start again. So hi, I'm Sean from Inventory Base. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Um, I know it's your lunchtime, it's beautiful weather out at the moment, so I'm just gonna take 30 minutes of your time and hopefully give you something to think about in regards to how technology can actually create personal connections rather than what a lot of people think will happen is that they actually take them away. So. In an era where we're defined you know, by constant change, we're having to adapt our work, and that is not necessarily through choice, it's actually through necessity. And we've actually been doing this for quite a few years in regards certainly to what's happened with COVID. Uh, but I don't wanna bang on about that, I think we've heard enough. Um, but how do you actually balance these challenges and how do you prevent yourself from being overwhelmed by the data, by the processes that you're having to manage? And the key thing is how do you actually find the time to actually make those personal connections. Um, the ones that will take you from instruction right the way through to completion, whether that's in sales, or whether that is in lettings. So the points we're gonna go through, as you can see here, in fact, unveiling the impact. And um, we're gonna look at why data hampers personal connections, how we can optimize your processes for efficiency. Um, how about, how, sorry, how you blend technology and personal connections um, and actually get some tangible benefits from that. And then we're going to be looking at elevating success, you know, how you can boost client satisfaction, boost your referrals and boost your sales. And then it's about striking the balance between an effective strategy and how you merge technology while still having that human touch. So bear with me, just a little bit of fun here. So I just wanted to have a look at, you know, what the history of PropTech is actually like. And obviously I know these are only a small um, few steps in the timeline of how we've been, but I thought it was just uh, quite interesting. So you can see there's uh, uh, 3,200 to 3,100 before um, our common era. Cuneiform hieroglyphics all used to record property transactions, and especially in Egypt, um, in the Middle East, you know, property was everything. You know, what is what you had, what's made you as a person, what made you as a business, what made you as someone to be recognised in, you know, your country, recognised in the kind of work that you did. Moving on to that to 1455, that's when we saw the first mechanised printing press, and that was by Johannes Gutenberg, and it really revolutionised not just property-related docs and info, but everything that we did. Everything was now being put onto paper, so from being said about, we actually then started to actually write it down. And then in 1945, the US came up with the electronic, uh, electronic numerical, uh, numerical numerical integrator and computer, and it was the first program called computer. So this is where we've gone from hieroglyphics to printing to actually putting something on what we now uh, see every day in our lives into a computer, into a data format. And then 1980 to about year 2000, that's when the actual prop tech term was actually coined. And this was actually during the Microsoft era. So this isn't new. I know we talk about it and people tend to roll their eyes a little bit and say, oh, prop tech, you know, a bit bored of that. 
but it's actually been in there in the background for ages and ages. It's just the fact that we've really picked up on it in recent years. And a lot of that was launched um, or started to be launched when um, Google launched um, in 1998. And certainly from inventory based point of view, that's when the, our first mobile app was developed and added to the market. So at that point, that's when property tech or prop tech really came into its own. So a little bit of a brief history for you. So talking about unveiling the impact, as you can see here, an estimated 328.77 million terabytes of data created each and every day, right across the globe, computers, apps, smart devices, and of course now AI. And here I'll show you a bit of context. So one terabyte gives you 250,000 photos taken with a 12 megabyte camera, 250 movies or 500 hours of HD video and 6.5 million document pages and Dropbox say that these include office files, PDFs, presentations, plus a whole plethora of other information that we generate. So you can imagine we're generating a hell of a lot of data. We're having to remember and do a lot of things. But the problem that we often find with this data and the amount that we have, it actually hampers our personal connections because we've got an overload. We're, we're, we're time crunch. We're getting um, our time reduced because we're trying to deal with all this information and understand it. And in the meantime, that means then we're not having time to spend with our clients. Um, and this can obviously go into information overload. So we're almost like drowning in data. And it really then becomes very difficult to actually find what truly matters for the clients. You know, what is going to make their life, their journey, their work with you better, more streamlined, um, and also going to give you or and them time back to be actually be able to manage their actual workload. Also, personal connections are hampered by the impersonality of um, data-driven channels. Um, we are relying much more on chatbots, we've got AI, and sometimes AI will actually give us the ability to um, showcase what it is we're trying to say in a personal way, but th there's still a bit of a disconnect. It still doesn't feel real, doesn't feel like you're actually talking to a person. And unless we get to a point where these chatbots um, and these responses feel like um, a person, it can feel impersonal and people then tend to kind of move away from that. And a lot of this gives us um, missed opportunities. So whilst we're managing this plethora of data, this volume of information, some of the important client details can fall through the cracks. Now, if you think about it, years and years ago, everything was done on the handshake. Everything was done on the basis that you knew the person, you knew who they were, what they wanted from you, um, and then you knew how to react. But if you rely on more and more data, the data will give you a lot of information but it won't tell you how that person maybe is feeling, how what they're managing, um, whether they're a go-getter, whether they're someone who's more process-driven or someone who basically wears a sleeve on their, uh, sorry, the heart on their sleeve. And because of that, then they react and, and do their service or offer their service and, and the way they work in a different kind of way. Data can only give you so much. And this can basically mean that you end up with making emotional, emotionless decisions. Um, and that can overshadow things because then you don't have that genuine connection and that person doesn't feel you've got a genuine connection with them. So even though data is really useful, it's helpful, it doesn't always necessarily mean that we are going to be able to make those personal connections that we really want and what the client wants at the end of the day. And looking at the data at the moment, so if you look back to 2020, we had 1.3 million properties sold. In 2022, 1.1 million. It's around about that 800, I think 76 for 2023, but obviously figures are not quite full yet. Um, and in the private rental sector, we've got 4.61 private rentals. And then in the social housing sector, that has been a 13% increase since 2021, because obviously there's a big part of PRS and also social housing. So what that says is that, yes, we can look at the terabytes and what that creates, but all of this is creating even more data right the way through the uh, property sale chain, the lettings chain, and every single touch point, every interaction we have, whether it's online, it's via um, a desktop, it, it all creates data pathways. So with all that data, how are you going to connect it all? How are you going to get to a point where actually it one makes sense and also that you can actually use it and use it well? And we are, are we ever actually going to get to a point where we can literally have a you know every data point integrating 
together with each other. And that is where, you know, the human connection, the technology connection, that's what we need to kind of like balance as it were. And Bill Gates, as you can see here, says the advance of technology is based on making it fit. So you don't really even notice it's part of everyday life. So it should be working in the background. You shouldn't see it, shouldn't feel it to a certain extent. Obviously, you're going to be using the tech, but it should all be working so that when you press a button, when you move something, when you ask something, it's just there. But with that, we need to advance the technology that goes with that. But with the advancements of technology that we're now seeing with AI, you know, we are simplifying transactions. We've created blockchain in certainly in the financial sector, and we're now doing that in the property sector. Um, and it's all about fostering seamless communication. And what we need to be doing is putting people back at the heart of, you know, the actual ownership of buildings, the leasing, the workspaces, and making them the focus and enhancing their experience. So it makes it more enjoyable for those involved. And I know some people would say, well, isn't that more of a cost thing? You know, isn't it more about making sales, et cetera? Yes, it is. But if you can make it an enjoyable experience, then people will come back and time and time again and use your services. But as the key question here is, where do we start? So key thing is to streamline your, you know, with your prop tech and optimize your processes for increased efficiency. So look at the data, um, look at what you need and also where it's coming from and does it inform or just confuse? Because we've got so much data coming at us and we're constantly being told, and I see it all the time on social media, you know, statistics for this, percentages for that, that's great as long as it informs. But if it doesn't and you're more confused, then if you're confused, then what do you think your client's going to be? They're going to find it much more difficult to understand what it is you're trying to impart, how that's going to help them and how they can actually put it into practice with the information and the guidance you're giving. So you should always look at the data in, a, in the context of, do you need it? Does it inform? Where's the provenance of the data? Can you trust it? Um, and is it gonna actually help you? And that will then look at, help you look at your tech stack to say, okay, this part of tech works, this doesn't, and this is what I need in order to take me through to the next step. You also need to have clear information. So this is information that you can both interrogate and can be shared easily with your stakeholders. And your stakeholders are everybody in that information chain from the buyer, the seller, the renter, the landlord, the suppliers. Every single person within that chain is a stakeholder because they have a stake in making sure that that client is uh, looked after, that the end product is exactly what they want and that they keep coming back for more. So the clearer the information, the clearer the journey is. And the ability to interrogate it means then you can see, well, what's working, what's not working, and how can I improve? If you don't have that clear information, then you're not going to be able to progress. And then the other uh, way of streamlining is looking at the interoperability of it. You know, are your systems, your devices, your applications and products connected? And the key thing certainly with connection is do they communicate effortlessly or are you double keying are you constantly adding information in to be able to get information out or is it already doing it before you as bill gates says behind the scenes working for you and if it's not then maybe it's not the right tech for you maybe it's not the right process or the right service that you want so you've got to look at all of these key areas whether the data is right whether the information is clear and whether it can actually communicate with everybody else within your tech stack. So all your information points and so that when you get the information in, you can easily move it to the right people and what they want from it. And that's where the power of integration comes into, into play. So the blending of technology, your personal connections, and then obviously, uh, obviously creating tangible benefits. So you need to find out what works for you. So prioritize your user-friendly tools to make your work easier and maintain a personal touch. So again, look at the data, look at the information. Is it working? Is it what you need? And then you're looking at customization. So look at what the customer wants. You might give them A, but they might need C, but you won't know that unless you talk to them. And that's where the personal communication comes in. That's why the tech is there to do the work, but you're there to actually have that face-to-face -face kind of conversation saying, what is it you need? 
what do we need to deliver and how we can customize that to get that customization working from you so working for you and create that right communication line and then it's about levering social media so we are well we've got loads of social media out there TikTok, uh, video um twitter facebook linkedin we've got messaging we've got video calls we've got virtual tours all of these connect clients but we need to find out what connects with them and suits them the best but also give them the options to be able to do that um because not every single social media channel will work for every single client depending on what their needs are so it's about embracing the diversity of the channels but also understanding what suits the client so it, it will never be a case of that they will want every single one they might need to focus on one particular um area of social media like TikTok, um to make sure that the information you're providing is in the kind of format that they understand that they enjoy they connect with and then by doing that you understand the needs and preferences of the client you're understanding what it is they want from you where the relevant recommend recommendations will be and then you can personalize it. You can then say to them, well, I can offer you A, B and C, but I also actually, now I'm looking at it, I can also offer you D as well. And that is mean you're being proactive. It means that you're not just saying, I've got one product, I've got one service, I can show you one way of buying a house or renting a house. Um, but if you've got a whole option, a whole arsenal in your toolkit to be able to show them the different ways that you can work because the tech is doing all of that for you, that means then you can personalize it because one size will never ever fit all. We all have different ways of working, we all have different needs and it's about making those needs work for everybody. And that means we can work smarter. So this is where tangible benefits will come into play. By streamlining uh, the processes and automating the tasks, we can reduce admin. So on average, you could um, uh, reduce like 10 hours per week per person or per system. And by multiplying that, by doing that each and every time that you add, have a service or change a service, you can create more tangible benefits into your processes, your admin, which will naturally um, provide you better uh, return on investment in regards to staff time and costs and also the amount of effort and time you spend with the client and also what you uh, charge them in for your services. Um, it's not a case of race to the bottom, it's not a case of how cheap you can do it, it should always be about the quality. And this will boost sales, so your personal connections will drive higher conversions, it will increase sales and revenue because people react to um, that personal touch, they want to see that person. And we've been kind of like starved with it over the last few years and even though you know, we're kind of like back to normal. There's still elements where we're still a little bit apart. You know, we're still not having those uh, uh, interactions as much as we would like to. And just because of our human nature, we like that interaction. We want to see that person's face. We want to understand how they're feeling and how we can then react to them. And that makes us stand out. So embracing technology is not just about automating it it's about then what that benefit gives you back i.e your time so that you can then focus on the things that matter to the client and that creates um, a genuine connection and that shows that you're customer centric it's your approach is about them and that you are there to earn their trust and then get the repeat business from them now depending obviously what your service is, depending on how you're doing it, will then determine what kind of savings, where the benefits will be realized. But if you automate the tech, it will help you reduce that admin. It will be working around in the background so you can literally have the time to pick up that phone, make that connection, talk to that person and uh, manage their case or their property requests. And it really is about connecting on their terms. So um, elevating success is about making sure that you do everything to the optimum level. And so that your communication channels, you uh, engage, um, and that when you're using them, they're the right fit for them and it's convenient and it's also personal. So if they prefer text, use text. If they prefer WhatsApp, or if they prefer TikTok, depending on, again, what kind of service delivery that is. If you're promoting um, their property or promoting their service, it's all about that. And happy clients create happy referrals and they're your greatest advocates. Uh, clients, word of mouth, um, it's the way that you know a lot of businesses run. And certainly from my own personal point of view, that's how I run my business initially. 
And then it's about them being more eager to experience the same level of service and then creating that forward momentum for other people to use that service. And that all again brings um, strong connections, it fosters trust, it creates exceptional um, experiences and that again drives sales and allows you to grow your business. So connecting with them on their terms, making them happy and closing those deals with confidence is how you're going to get those repeat business. And that means, as I said, with the uh, prop tech, it, it has, helps you to boost client satisfaction, referrals and sales by tailoring those experiencing, uh, sorry, experiences. Um, making all of this very seamless and efficient is about making sure that your same time and effort on both sides is not just about you, it's about them as well. So if they want to communicate a certain way, a certain time that's going to be convenient to them, then if you can respond to that, then you're more likely to keep that sale and keep that going. And by harnessing the power data, you can then understand your clients at a much deeper level. You can understand what it is that they need, when they need it, and then you can offer targeted recommendations. So maybe services they haven't thought about before, but you think would be a really good fit, but based on what you understand and what you know about them, you can get a lot of that from statistics, you get a lot of that from your information, but um, that personal touch is what's going to make the real difference. So having those uh, solutions and being ready to, and being proactive with them really will make a difference. And you know, for me, in the realm of sales, the key lies certainly in building that emotional connection with your customer. We all, all no matter where we are, whether I'm at Tesco's, um, whether I'm at um, you know, the uh, doctor's surgery, whether I'm with a client, whether I'm with, with a new service um, provider, I want to feel an emotional connection because then I feel that I can then work with them and build a, a, a burden in business. And to be honest with you, it's about leaving a mark. It's about leaving a positive memory of how that interaction went and how they felt because they're more likely to come back and work with me on that basis. And it's very much about striking the balance, about you know using the technology to be an enabler, to enhance those personal connections and tailor experiences, and making sure those strategies are right to provide a seamless and humanized experience. It's not about data, it's not about how many stats you can show them, it's not about how many graphs you can provide that show what um, it is that you can do over and everybody else. They want a humanized experience. You can say, I sell X amount of properties and I've got this uh, rate of um, completions, but the one on a they honestly want to hear is how you get there. What do you do? Do you go that extra mile? Do you do more than their counterparts or your counterparts in order to make sure that that sale goes ahead or in the letting side in regards to getting the right tenant for the landlord so that it creates a positive experience and then the tenancy continues for um, longer than the, maybe the AST and then we have less void periods and it means that the tenants are happy and the landlord is getting a good return on their revenue. And this is where Inventory Base Connect comes in. So Inventory Base Connect um, is, is doing exactly what it says. It's connecting all of these different operations, all these different types of CRMs um, and systems to be able to connect draw information and take and push that information out to key stakeholders so that all the systems are aligned, they're talking to each other, it's all seamless, it's all working, as Bill Gates says, in the background, making it so that it's very clear for the individual as to where the benefits are, where they can make efficiencies and also they can improve the customer experience. So by dovetailing, by connecting your repit, your depositories, your fixed flows, your MRI systems, in with your service system for inventories, for inspections, for interim inspections, risk assessments, and so on. It means then all that information, all that data that you're collecting is seamless, it's available, and it means then you don't have to then sit and try and work out who said what, when, it's already there available, so that if you've got queries, you've got issues, you can manage them there straight and forward um, with the tenant, with the uh, vendor, with the buyer, and making sure that that um, whole experience is, is seamless, um, but as personal as possible. So the tech is working away, is connecting with Inventory Base Connect and MRI and PayProp uh, SME professional, so that you can then just get on with the job of actually um, managing that client satisfaction, 
increasing your pipeline um, and getting those really good ratings from your clients as to how you manage your service. And a lot of these strategies are about merging said the technology and human touch, automate, automating repetitive tasks to save your time, scheduling then your face-to-face -face meetup so you can actually shake the hand, talk to that person, have a coffee, use the tools like video conferencing if you can't quite make it there, but use that to still create the human touch so that they're not talking to just a screen, they're talking to you like I am trying to do today. And that then is a way of blending your operations, making them seamless, making them friendly with the technology so that it becomes part and parcel of your everyday uh, working strategy to get those um, people, those clients, and those customers to work with you and to use your services. And then focus on building those connections. So it's not just a one-off, this is a continuous thing that you need to do each and every day, every single client, across every single vertical so that um, they feel valued. And again, they create that word of mouth and making sure that the um, uh, service delivery and the experience is the best that it possibly can be. And then you will increase your revenue based on that. Um, and here's just a couple of words from me, just saying about, you know, we are perpetually uh, changing, that adaptability is no longer an option. It's an imperative, we've got to do that. Um, but we can find a way of managing the data processes and making the personal connections both paramount and count. But you've got to make sure you're not overwhelmed. You've got to make sure your tech is doing the work that you want it to do, that the data is there, it's clear, it's informative, it's working with you and not against you. And just making sure that you know, whatever it is that you do in regards to your connections and how you connect your systems, that the right ones for you, the right ones for your clients. So always task your tech. So that's it from me. I hope that you found that useful. Um, and if you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to take them. Thanks, Sean. Um, yes, we have, do have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is, is tech going to change or enhance, enhance what we do as agents? It's going to do both. It's going to change and enhance. It will change if you use the right tech to streamline your processes we've talked about to make sure that they are uh, automated, they're seamless, but equally they actually work for you, getting out of it what you need to inform, to understand, to build those connections with your customers. Uh, but it will also enhance that because if you've got more time to talk to people, if you can do that face to face, if you can um, build that rapport, build that relationship, like we used to have years and years ago, if it was done on a handshake and now we do everything via DocuSign. But that handshake um, is still important. That personal connection is still important. So if you use the tech right, you can both um, change for the better, get better ROI, better return on investment, but also then enhance that customer experience and get that word of mouth um, endorsement from them, which will then bring more people to you over and above your competitor. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, just another one. Uh, can we trust tech to keep our data safe? Yes, you can. Um, we've certainly got a lot of um, security um, infrastructures, both certainly with inventory base, um, inventory base connect and all the other services and all the other providers we work with, all our other partners, Fixflow, MRI, um, you know, open bricks, uh, depository, etc. Um, but it's also making sure you keep on top of it. It doesn't mean that you can just leave it and let it go. You've still got to be aware, still got to be aware of your responsibilities, your GDPR responsibilities, making sure that Whoever is managing that side of the tech understands it. They've got the experience, they've got the know-how, they've got the ability to support you should there be a query, should there be an issue. And also rely on information like ICO, so the Information Commissioner's Office, which talk about um, and support GDPR. And they're a really good resource to understand exactly how it is that you manage all of your data um, all the way through, especially with when you're dealing with customer and personal data, so that you that you don't ever breach it. Um, so you can data is safe, but you've got to make sure it's safe. So make sure your security and safety protocols are all in place, and the people that are managing those have the right skill sets to be able to do that. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for that. That's all the questions that have come through. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Sean. Thank you for everyone for registering. If you do want to watch anything back, the recording will be sent to you shortly. Um, and don't forget to log that for your CPD as well. Okay, I hope you have a lovely rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.